Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this review of Ferran OS, which was taken from the January 2018 ISO. Left on my system a while, so it's been a, yeah, a bit of a time before I finally got around to reviewing it. Now I notice the Ferran OS dev does comment on quite a few of my videos. You've been encouraging me to review it a while? Yes, I know. So here we are, finally got around to it. So Ferran OS is based on Linux Mint. Has to be one of the few distributions based on Linux Mint that I'm aware of. It is described as a pseudo rolling release, with plans to make it a full-blown rolling release in the future. I noticed at boot up it states Linux Mint 18.3 on the Plymouth boot up screen, but LSB release A states 18.2, so uh, somewhere between them I guess. 18.3 is latest at time of recording, so I would imagine it is 18.3. 3-M, which is a command I am most certainly not going to marry, as someone stated, but yes, here we are, we have the memory usage, which is rather handy to find out with these distributions, so we have 689 mega RAM at boot up. Let's repeat the test, same again. And in terms of CPU usage, we have nothing much open, what do we have? Well, very minimal, looks between 1.5 to 2% utilisation. Good, lots of CPU spare for me to play around with. Now one thing I immediately noticed with this distribution is the theming. It is very flat and very bright, and actually kind of difficult to make out where the programs are. Yeah, this is one thing I've kind of struggled with. I'll kind of ignore Vivaldi because I have customised it to take it to a different theme colour, and yes, I was looking at the general discussion boards. Yeah, I changed it to use a dark colour. Yeah, that looks perfectly fine, but it's uh, a lot of the default Cinnamon applications. Yes, this uses the Cinnamon desktop. You know, with some of these lights backgrounds, it's been very hard to work out where the applications actually are. But I noticed this one has a drop shadow on it. It's funny that uh, not many of the applications seem to have that. <laughs> hmm. so yeah, there are some uh, inconsistencies with the theming. Although it does have a dark mode here which I clicked on, and yes, that goes to black now. So we've gone from yeah, we've gone from one extreme to the other. So we've gone from white, literally white, to black and dark gray. But what I thought would happen if I opened dark mode again was it would switch back to being light. Okay, maybe I'm carrying on about theming perhaps a little bit too much, but that is generally one major feature and what separates one distribution from the other. The themings that have been included and the overall presentation of the operating system. Happily though, one thing we can talk about with Ferran OS is that it does have another feature in that it does have a look switcher. Perhaps not quite as snappy as some of the other look switchers I've seen in Zorin and Ubuntu Mate, but it is there. And perhaps not as feature rich either, but look, before I go and criticise it too much, let's take a look at a couple of them. So we do have the automatic move around the panels and perhaps a readjustment of some of the colours as well. So yeah, now with the tablet mode, we've gone for a transparent look. Nice, that yeah, does help maximise space, or make it look like we have maximised usage of space. Let's try one of the Windows layouts. Okay, it's not quite what I would call Windows XP and 2000 layout, and I would not really call that Windows 10 layout either. In fact, I've only seen one Linux distribution carry out a Windows 10 layout reasonably well, and that was Extern OS. I was kind of curious about the Windows 3.1 layout, considering 3.1 never had a start bar or application launcher. Um, yeah, <laughs> neither does this, so I guess that's a fair representation of the desktop. Hmm. One theme I did manage to install from the GitHub page was the Yosemblance, which I suppose is made to look like Unity, albeit with a slightly different colour and icon theme. But yes, that is a kind of Unity-like layout. But either way, with all the desktops, we have the application launcher, the Mint application launcher, which has, which has an application searcher in there. The searcher is very fast and responsive. I'll go back to the default theme. The default layout of the Close, Minimize, Maximize buttons on the Ferran OS default theme is kind of very reminiscent of the GNOME desktop. We have the Close and Maximize, I suppose the Minimize button is an addition. It's not really my favourite layout, but you can change it. You can mix and match portions of the theme if that's what you want to do. You can add and remove themes, searching online for them. And there's a couple of miscellaneous tweaks. 
a welcome screen is provided. Something I like to see for new users. I just think it kind of helps really. Yeah, There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so a bit of information about the desktop. But one point I wasn't really so keen on under the features is on the security side. So Ferran OS can get viruses and other infections, but it doesn't. Rapid and timely updates ensure that there are very few, if any, threats to the Linux system. Like Ferran OS that persist in the wild. In reality, there have been very few public infections in the last 10 years that can affect a Ferran OS. Hmm, citation needed. <laughs> because I can think of quite a few. There was Samba Cry, Heartbleed, and Shellshock. Shellshock was around in 2014 and is still being actively exploited even today. And even Linux Mint itself was infected back in 2016. Well, of course, the recent ones for this year of Spectre and Meltdown. Which, one problem with Linux Mint is that it withholds updates. By default, level 4 and level 5 updates, which are the kernel, are withheld thereby ensuring that Mint remains vulnerable to Meltdown and Spectre until the user specifies otherwise. Yeah, I might want to rethink that because the risk to Linux is considerably lower, but you absolutely cannot say there is no risk at all. Here, a couple of these features didn't seem to work for me when I clicked them, so getting started and recommended apps didn't seem to do much for me, it just uh, closed the application. There's links across the community, yeah. And you can revert to the default settings and install additional software. It's nice, good to see. Nice little animation on it when it opened as well. The default browser of choice is Vivaldi. Bit of an unusual one to see. I seem to have a bit of an issue with files. That it was very difficult to get the application menu to appear. Kind of found I had to click around a little bit and uh, yeah, eventually it does appear. Why was I interested in that? Well, I needed to connect to a server, my NAS, to download some files off it via SSH. The software manager has the application ratings and reviews. Yeah, so that's all good. Not sure what's gone on in the theme there. Ah, oh, I've got two copies open. Okay, yeah. Very difficult to tell that with the lack of borders around the program. In terms of other applications on the system, we've got Redshift there, so that's an interesting one. So that will uh, that will decrease the blue light and monitor late in the day, sort of uh, helps you fall asleep after using the computer for long periods. Under games, you have Steam pre-installed, graphics. So there's one that cute application there, of Krita, and Krita is using a dark theme. Under internet, you have a web browser manager. It looks like a feature that has been lifted from the Zorin desktop, although it does mention that. So yeah, the option to choose between different browsers. Point and click install for them. Office has a full suite of LibreOffice. Other, we've got the Conky desktop toggler. That is a Conky widget in the top right hand side there of the clock. Sound and video have VLC for the multimedia player, rhythm box for the audio player, and an option to install multimedia codecs, which is rather useful. Administration. So this distribution doesn't really have much in the way of the Mint tools, which actually isn't too bad really. <laughs> I'm not too keen on some of the Mint tools. And that's interesting, the option to switch to unstable just through the package management tweaks. Now we've got the time shift, we've got time shift backup and restore on here. So that was a feature that came pre-installed with Linux Mint 18.3. Under preferences, uh, there's quite a variety here, but uh, one thing I noticed here, for a maintenance tool, I believe this not only fixes some maintenance issues of your system, but also fixes any little bugs that have been introduced, because I noticed one little comment on the website about needing to run this. I can't remember exactly what it was regarding, but the maintenance tool would fix a certain issue. So, so yeah, that could be a useful feature. Didn't find any problems on my install at the moment. A couple of items which I will touch on is a desk lit. So that's, uh, this is like uh, widgets you can add to the Cinnamon desktop. So the option to download or extra widgets. And, yeah, it seems to be quite a few nowadays. It's a growing number. And the control panel type view of the system settings does seem to have quite a few items included. 
Privacy was an interesting one. Remember recently accessed files? <laughs> yes or no? Never forget old files? Well, yeah. Depends how forgetful you want your system to be. Other than the issues I've had with the theming, and this is my personal preference really, that it's very difficult to see where the applications are due to the sort of single color usage and lack of border or shadow. Now I've not really found much of a problem in the rest of the operating system, I mean, at least it does highlight there with the close, minimize, maximize buttons being grayed out or colored, which is the active application. So it does kind of help slightly. But yeah, I still found it very difficult to use in that respect. But in terms of stability, no problems at all. Speed, yeah, perfectly fine. So yeah, it was an interesting Linux distribution to try out. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.